Hey guys, welcome to day four. Uh, today we're looking at continuity at a point, and I'm going to do my best to keep this video as short as possible. Also, I'm going to try and speak a little bit louder and clearer so everybody can hear really well. Okay, before we talk about continuity at a point, let's just talk about continuity. So let's talk about it in layman's terms first, then we'll get into the definition at a point. So A graph is said to be continuous. An easy way to think about it is something is continuous if you can draw it without picking up your pen. Okay, so here are some examples of continuous looking graphs. Here we go. That that line is continuous. It's it's never broken. There aren't any holes, there aren't any jumps, there aren't any skips, there aren't any vertical asymptotes. Okay. So when we think about continuous, I want to think about no holes, no jumps, no vertical asymptotes. So that's what continuity means. Right, so here's another example of a graph that's continuous. So that graph continues unbroken forever. Here's another one. Okay. Here are some graphs that have discontinuities in them. So here's a couple of graphs that have some that are discontinuous or have some discontinuities. Because of that jump right there, we have a discontinuity. Here's another one. That graph is discontinuous. Here's another one. That graph is discontinuous. Here's one more example. That graph is also discontinuous. Okay? Even though the hole is filled in somewhere else, it's still discontinuous. The domain on that last one is all real, but it's still discontinuous because it has that hole. I mean, I couldn't draw that line without picking up my pencil to go dot put that dot up towards the top okay now if you look at these last two graphs that are currently on the screen here they are they are both discontinuous but they're only discontinuous at one place okay right here and right here all other parts of the of those two graphs are continuous it just has discontinuity at one point so we want to get a definition and this is a definition that you need to know um, and we'll have to explain and use as justification on the AP exam. We have to know how to justify continuity at a point. Okay, so here's the definition. A graph is, um, a function is continuous at a point if three things occur, okay? The first thing, let's take a look. Let's look back to those graphs we have. This first graph right here on the left. If you notice, if we call this A, what would be the limit as X goes to A? Well, the limit as x goes to a would uh, does not exist because the right-hand limit at a and the left-hand limit at a are different numbers. So anytime we, we can't find a limit, the limit does not exist, that guarantees discontinuity. So 
that proves that that first one is discontinuous because a limit doesn't exist at A. <coughs> How about the second graph? Does the limit exist at A? Well, the answer there is most definitely yes. The right-hand and left-hand limits are the same, but it's still discontinuous. That's not an, it's not enough just to say, oh, a limit must exist. Anytime a limit exists, the graph is continuous. No, that's not true. We need more than that. This graph right here, the limit does not exist because the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit are different. So our step one is we have to have a limit exist for continuity. So here's what we say. f of x is continuous at x equals a if and only if, number one, we must have a limit that exists. If the limit doesn't exist, we know we, we are not continuous. So number one, limit as x goes to a of f of x exists. By the way, just a reminder, for that limit as x goes to a of f of x, for that to exist, what must be true? You need to be absolutely automatic with this response. Limit x goes to a of f of x exists when the right-hand limit equals the left-hand limit. So on previous year's exams, they've had kids, the question has been, is this function continuous at x equals a? And um, you have to first show that the limit exists. To show the limit exists, you have to show the right-hand and left-hand limits are the same. Okay? But that's not enough. Let's go back to the second graph. So on the second graph right here, we can see that the limit exists as x goes to a, but the function is undefined at a. So we have to add in that f, must, f of a must be defined. If f of a is undefined, we can't have continuity. So that's step two. So we have to have our function defined at A for our graph to be, for our function to be continuous at A. So as a result, graph two there fails. This one fails continuity because F of A is undefined. But take a look at our fourth graph. This graph right here. Does the limit exist at A? Absolutely. Right? Approaching from the left and the right, I'm approaching the same number. Is the function defined at A? Absolutely. Our function is defined at A. Well, we can still see that that is discontinuous. Okay. What if I moved that dot? I could move that dot to a place where all of a sudden my function is now continuous. Take a look. I'm trying to just open it. I'll lose the whole thing. Dang it. Ah, I thought that was going to be so cool. I was trying to move the dot. If I move that dot to plug that hole, then I would have a continuous function. Then I could draw it without um, picking up my pencil. So not only must the limit exist and the function be defined, but those two things must be equal to each other. So that's our third and final step for proving continuity. My limit as x goes to a of f of x must equal f of a. Now, let's think about a continuous graph. 
this graph is continuous at A because the limit exists, right? I'm approaching the same thing from the left and the right. My limit exists. Let's say it's one. The function is defined. F of A exists. And F of A happens to equal one. All three of those things have to be true. And really, you could just boil it down to the third step. The third step encapsulates it all. For the limit as x goes to a of f of x to equal f of a, that means the limit must exist, the function must be defined, and they must be equal to each other. I need you guys to not just write down these three steps in your notes, but I need you to start committing these three steps to memory. This right here is vitally important. Hugely, hugely important, okay? In May, when we take the AP exam, you're going to have to know that like the back of your hand. So you might as well learn it right now, memorize it, so we're ready to go. All right, that's it for today. 11 minutes and 9 seconds. Talk to you guys later. Bye!